This is a production of WKNO Memphis. Production funding for Behind the Headlines is made possible in part by the WKNO Production Fund, the WKNO Endowment Fund, and by viewers like you. Thank you. A look at the major changes being proposed for trash and recycling services in Memphis tonight on Behind the Headlines. Uh, we are joined tonight by a number of guests to talk about ch big changes in the way that uh, sanitation workers are paid, the services that are delivered, even changes in the fees. And we have a big table tonight. Thank you all for being here. Thank Kemp you. Conrad, Memphis City Council. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Dawn Gillum, Director of Public Works for the City of Memphis. Thank Thanks you for being here. Thanks for the here. invite. George Little, CAO for the City of Memphis. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Gail Tyree is Executive Director of the Sanitation Workers Union. It's Thanks for being pleasure. here. It's my pleasure. And Bill Drees, senior reporter with the Memphis Daily News. So there are, there are a couple of interrelated parts to this, and I think maybe I'll start with you, um, uh, Mr. Little. Um, there are changes to the way services are going to be proposed, changes to the fees, and changes to re retirement benefits for the sanitation workers. Maybe give us an overview of all those changes, and then we'll, we'll dig deeper into them. Certainly, Eric. Uh, in terms of the service delivery, what is being proposed here jointly uh, through the cooperation of the sanitation workers uh, uh, over and above what they usually do, I might add, uh, would be uh, an increased emphasis on recycling services. Uh, we're actually looking at providing not one cart but two carts. Right now, citizens get a uh, tub to carry their recyclables. They have to sort them out. Under the new system, you just dump all of your recyclables in the one cart your waste in the other cart, get it down to the curb. We take it from there. Uh, not only will this simplify matters, but in the long term, it will increase recycling, reduce landfill costs, and uh, really help the environment. Uh, beyond that, uh, we're going to invest in new equipment, uh, so we'll have better, more reliable equipment. Uh, we won't have that much chronicled and infamous garbage juice to trail behind our crews wherever they go, so I'm <laughs> sure that will help with the overall quality of life. Um, and then we're looking at uh, improvements as far as how we pick up the, the waste that goes on the curb, the uh, rubbish and that sort of thing. But we're going to take that on as we deal with the recycling issue. It also creates the, the plan, a retirement benefit, a, a pension benefit for, I guess, all uh, sanitation workers, which I, I have to admit, and I'm fairly close to this stuff, I didn't know they weren't in the, the retirement system. Well, and that, that goes back many decades. Uh, there were uh, decisions made, uh, certainly before my time, between the uh, city and local 1733. Um, the sanitation workers currently receive Social Security. The city does provide for a match on a 457. Which is a, a 401k type oh, of... Basically a 401k okay. type. Okay. And I think it's important to point out that we're not talking about adding the sanitation workers to the existing pension plan, nor are we talking about setting up a new pension plan. Rather, part of what we will be achieving under this plan are increased efficiencies, lower costs per stops. So in effect, what we're talking about is a savings sharing and a supplemental retirement right. plan that will be fully funded out of the savings, fully funded out of the sweat equity that right. the uh, workers are putting in. So okay. the city has a whole other discussion coming down uh, relative to pensions. And so rather right. than adding on to the pension burden, uh, we're creating a separate supplemental avenue under this agreement. Okay. okay, and we'll come back to the big picture of that in a second. But let me bring you in, uh, Gail Tyree. The, what is the history of the sanitation workers not being in the, the, the pension system? I mean, how did that, walk us through how that came about. Well, let me say this. You have to go back to 1967 and what was happening in the city uh, during that time. Uh, the, the local was chartered like in 1963. Um, and in 1967, right before the, the famous uh, sanitation strike, um, the decision was made by those workers and you got to remember, we were dealing with Henry Loeb. There was not a whole lot of trust between um, the workers in the city. Uh, for a lot of the workers, you have to understand, these were men that were not uh, men that had PhDs. And so they were looking at what would be the most trusted avenue to take. And so they chose going with Social Security because that was explained as uh, the new plan, uh, the more secure plan at the time. 
and they had an option between taking the Social Security and the pension. At that time, they could not have them both. So they chose Social Security as opposed to the pension plan as a way to really secure in their future. And, and so now you've got workers who are in there, you know, I can't remember the, quite, the number you probably know, the number of workers over 65. It's quite a few. It is quite a few. Who you expect would take this plan if it's, if it's put forward, if it's approved by council in the next few weeks. Uh, exactly right. Currently, there's about 39 workers that we have looked at according to the data we have that uh, December of this year would be eligible to take it. Um, and most of them are looking forward to it. Okay. With their, and, and with their Social Security, they won't make enough to they won't make enough to live okay, on. Okay, uh, Councilman Conrad, we, as George Little just mentioned, I mean, there's a big debate. We just came through a budget season where there's a lot of discussion about benefits, long-term benefits, um, the state getting involved and saying, "Look, in Memphis, you've got problems with how you're you're funding things." Um, but this does this create you know does this only add to that problem the whatever it is 600 to 700 million in unfunded uh, city pensions is this just adding to that pool? First, I want to thank George, Dwan, and Gail for all the work they've done on this and getting us to where we are. Uh, especially, you know, Dwan is one of our best city directors. He does a great job. And the men and women who are out there working hard for the citizens of Memphis need to be recognized. I think one of the things that kind of just gets lost in that is we've got a lot of people that every day go out there and get it done for the citizens. So I just want to thank them for that. Um, I think uh, Chief Little uh, really spelled it out well. I don't think this adds to that burden. It would be a separate plan the way it's proposed now, but one of the concerns that I had and a lot of my colleagues had on Tuesday was it is a defined benefit plan as a, as a more of a, a plan possibly that we could build on where we could maybe go up and down, uh, con contribute more in years where there are more savings, maybe less in, year, in their years than the other. That's one of the questions we've asked, have not got the answer to that yet, but this would be a defined benefit plan. And so what we typically do in city government, I'd say governments all across the country, is usually benefits only go up. They don't usually go down. So what happens in a year if there aren't those savings? What if the cost of fuel uh, spikes and, and goes up like we've seen the last few years, although trending down here recently? Do you think that we're going to go and, and the, uh, you know, the 86-year-old uh, retiree, are we going to reduce his check? Probably not. So we're, what's going to happen? Well, then that's going to be on, on the taxpayers are going to have to pay for it. So um, that's my main concern with the way it's proposed now. Uh, you know, the council proposed a buyout, which would have given, I believe, up to 70 or $75,000 lump sum to some of the older, uh, the most uh, senior uh, workers, as opposed to a maximum $12,000 benefit now. That's one of the discussions we had Tuesday. Is there a way possibly to do more of a lump sum for the folks that are ready to retire? So, uh, you know, I think personally we're about uh, 85, 90 percent of the way there. There's a lot of good in this plan. But these are kind of the final details uh, that, I, that I think need to be discussed and worked out just to make sure we're considering right. all options. And, and right now, the, the, there's solid waste, sanitation services are paid, correct me, anyone at the table, correct me if I'm wrong, out of a solid waste fee. It doesn't come out of our city taxes, or is it supplemented by that solid waste fee that, that we pay? And, and that's a key question. Right now, solid waste is entirely funded out of the fee structure. Okay. And so there is a third leg, if you will, to this stool, and that is the fee structure. Director Gillum and his staff have looked at the current fees, which have been reduced to $22.85, and have determined, uh, and in fact it's in the, the budget documents, that that's not sufficient to cover our costs. And so the small increment that would get us back really to where we were before uh, June 30th would not only fund this program, but would keep the fund solvent. That's critical because one of the issues that the comptroller approached the city about was having these uh, special funds, enterprise funds, that were having to be either supplemented out of the general fund or, frankly, carrying a debt. And so uh, regardless of what we do on this plan, and we're very supportive of it, we've got to make sure that we're right in terms of how we're funding solid waste services so we don't add to our issues. Uh, let me get, let me get, uh, can, I, can I just have one thing? I think it's important to note that over the last 10 years before this became an enterprise fund, the general fund, the, the system was so inefficient, lent the solid waste operation effectively over 10 years around $102 million. So that is the, and that's why we do need to make a decision on this. That is the price of delay, $100 million that was sucked out of the general fund because th things were delayed and, and things like this. So okay. uh, it, it, we do need to get it figured out quickly. And, and Director Gillum, let's get you in the mix here. Th okay. There's the fee 
And then there are the efficiencies if this goes forward, because you're, you're talking about new trucks that are, I think, more efficient. And you're also talking about more stops per truck, another 100, 100 stops per day per truck. Is that correct? Absolutely. As part of this plan, uh, we're projecting to gener generate a savings of $4.7 million annually. Uh, most of the savings is a result of eliminating uh, more than 80 vacancies um, that are on the books uh, today. There's going to be uh, some savings uh, realized through uh, providing more efficient services, through adding 100 additional stops uh, to the current routes, which means that a truck or a crew that goes out in the morning, instead of pulling 467 stops, they would be pulling 467 stops, which means we won't need as many employees. We're also getting rid of what we call or refer to as a trash truck, which is a truck that usually goes behind a garbage truck uh, to pick up those little small hand piles. Under this particular proposal, uh, the garbage crews will be responsible for all of those hand piles. If it's larger than a hand pile, we still have our special equipment crews and our heavy equipment crews that will come in and pick up that debris. So there's going to be a savings realized by providing more efficient services in most cities, including some of the uh, uh, private company, pretty much all of the private companies, they don't have a trash truck. The garbage crews are responsible for all of those right. hand piles. So there's a lot more efficiency uh, being planned as part of this proposal. And then down the road, there's talk of, what do you call it, fee, fee, pay per throw. Pay per well, some of that, I mean, some of the, the debris that you put out, I mean, in this, I mean, I, as a homeowner, when I first moved to Memphis, somebody said, oh, you just put it all out there and it doesn't cost anything. And, wow, that's great, that's, but it's costly. I mean, I can put anything on my street and you guys will pick it up and it doesn't cost me any more. Right. A lot of cities have gone to, at a certain point in time, if you're going to put, you know, half a forest on your on your poor, <laughs> I mean, on your sidewalk, you're going to pay a little extra for that. Memphis has always provided what I consider to be a premium service. And that is if the homeowner places the items or the debris on the street, uh, we'll pick it up. Uh, some of the larger piles may not get picked up on your collection day, but we do pr a pretty good job in picking up right. any and everything that homeowners place on the curb. In terms of pay-as-you-throw, that is so far down the road it that is. it's okay. really not necessary for us to uh, speak to pay-as-you-throw okay. this morning. Okay. okay. Uh, Bill. Gail, uh, there, there have been talks about this going on for, for, for several years now. What was the key for the American Federation of State, County, and Municipal Employees to make the deal here? To, to, to agree to this? What, what, what made this something that you wanted to go for? People like Mr. Nickelberry, uh, Reverend Smith, who have 47 years service in their 70s, that said to us, we're ready to go. We're ready to go, but we can't afford to go. And I want to go back and speak to something that uh, Councilman uh, Kemp spoke about earlier, about the lump sum. You know, we talked about this lump sum a couple of years back, and the concern we have is that we have uh, senior employees that if they go out and they get this lump sum uh, two, three years with, with family members being scrapped for cash, um, they're going to be back at our door saying, I'm out of money. You know, what can the local do? Uh, is there anything I can do? And so we're more concerned with long term. We don't want to offer them a short term solution where we dump a bunch of money on these seniors, um, and then in, in four or five years, they're broke. Mm -hmm. And so for us to be able to sit down and come up with a way to take care of them a little longer. Um, and, and another reason why we don't want to do the lump sum is because we get to do a smaller investment out of the pot we get for a longer term return. Because when you, when you, when you do a, a lump sum, you have to invest a greater amount of the money. And we want to fund this from the savings. We don't want to take out of the pot and fund something where you got to give everybody eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000. We want this to be long term. And so we looked at making a smaller investment. Mm -hmm. But just, just the, the humanitarian side of us wanting to make sure that our older um, employees are taken care of. Okay, Kemp, as you outlined, you, you had a different idea about this several years ago about how to get to this to this general goal and meet the issues that you wanted. This is a different way, it seems, to that goal. Can you live with a different way to this? As I said, um, I, yeah, yeah, yes. I mean, I, but I, and, but so perhaps you do, I, I think one thing is you could do something for the folks that do want to retire now or are, are near retirement age, whether it's a lower payout over a certain amount of time, although someone, you know, they could get a lot less money if depending on their their life expectancy or whatnot, but then possibly different for, for, for the, again, the younger workers, because my concern is, and we see it, seen it in Memphis, 
and around the country with, with the defined benefit plans is, is usually they're added on to, and if there are no savings, and it is funded out of savings, that's great, but what happens when there are no savings? Or, uh, and, and then we get to a point where you're subsidizing it again. And is there a way where we can, through a defined benefit plan or through a structure that's already in place, perhaps contribute more, and then over time, in that investment vehicle, mm -hmm. if you look at returns in, in the market over time, they're much greater than, 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 than fixed amounts, despite what happened in 2008 or what happened in 1937. So right. will people be better off under that scenario? I don't know because I haven't gotten the answers back to their questions that we've been asking for weeks now. George, okay. what, what, what does happen if more workers take this than you anticipate? Well, let me say a couple of things. First, I think what has changed over the last couple of years is I think there's a greater trust between the administration and Local 1733. Uh, we spent a lot of time working on this issue after the earlier proposal was made, and so I think there's a point where we could actually get around the table and agree on the facts and the basis, and uh, not only with Gail's leadership, but her predecessor as well, Chad Johnson. Uh, again, this is not a defined benefit program. The typical defined benefit program would have a city contribution and an employee contribution, or I guess the uh, city could put it in. Uh, in this case, this is being funded entirely out of the savings that would be realized. The question has been asked, do we anticipate those savings continuing to be realized? We all have skin in the game. Uh, Director Gillum and his staff have identified a number of avenues that down the road, whether it's pay as you throw, uh, the benefits of recycling, which is, I think, going to be a cultural change here in terms of how we do business. Uh, Memphis is way behind the curve, and other cities, even apartment complexes, are required to recycle. It's just part of what you do. We're not there yet. Uh, so landfill costs, we make money off of the recyclables. Yes, that, yeah. And so I think working together with the unions uh, that we can, in fact, have this supplemental program, they recognize that this could go down, so there's a risk that they've assumed out of this program, unlike the uh, general fund retirement plan that we have for the city. Let's go to, you just mentioned making money off of recyclables, and you piped up and said, we, how, how much does the city make off recycling? It, it varies from one year to the right. next. It just depends on the market. Uh, but as Chief Little has indicated, um, uh, when other cities, and I add this to what he, uh, what he said, when other cities were paying to dispose of their recyclables, the uh, city of Memphis was actually getting paid. We had one of the more lucrative uh, right. recycling deals than Is that mostly from the aluminum? Uh, from the cans, aluminum, or is it for other parts of it too? Um, really? Plastics, because you hear the stories of of, of of communities that have to really they, they think they're recycling, but right. actually a lot of it is just going on a barge, getting sent to China or someplace and buried there. But that's not what's happening. I don't with think Memphis. it's being buried in China. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's being <laughs> sold or, in China. yeah, or whatever. Okay, Seriously, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, but we have a very lucrative deal okay. with our recycling okay. vendor. Um, okay. But the biggest savings is for every ton that we divert away from the landfill, we're actually going to save $26 in disposal costs. And okay. so you're really getting paid twice. You're going to get paid based on what the market is offering in terms of every ton, and then you're going to get paid again because every ton that we divert away from the landfill, we're saving $26 right. in disposal costs. Okay. So we're projecting once we get everything off the ground and running that we're probably going to save somewhere in the ballpark of around $2 million a year in disposal costs, landfill disposal costs. All right. And I cut you off. Uh, I, I was just going to say, I mean, what, what if there are no savings? I mean, if, there, if the savings aren't there, who? I mean, you can't. It, it's a defined benefit. And, I mean, are we going to reduce the payments to someone who's 86 years old if, if the savings? The short answer was is, that in the document that was given to council. That's in the document that was signed off on. Yes, sir. But, so, what happens in that? But scenario? let me. But let me say this also. We had our economists look at this. I mean, we're not going to go and commit to something that we know uh, are going to hurt the members. Um, and we're open to continue to talk this through. But the one thing that the economist has said is that just from the initial numbers, we're looking at about 15 years that this plan is going to be secure, just from our initial investment. Because you're talking about initially only 39 workers as of December that's eligible. Um, and then we're looking at another 65 that will be age 60 by the end of this year. So after that, then we look at the numbers to fall off to about on the average of about 13 people per year based on the data that we have that will be eligible for the plan. Now, we, when we look at this plan and we look at these numbers, we took a, a very low figure. We took $400 a year time 30 years, and there's a cap. So it's not like Mr. Nickerberry that has 59 years is going to multiply, that, that his multiplier is going to be 59 by the 400. It's only going to be 30. 
which is a maximum of $12,000. And if we're giving them $1,000 a month, that's the $12,000. So when you look at your first payout for these 39 people, we have the, the initial investment that's in a fund that when we look at the age of the people that we have coming out, we're looking at already up front having this investment for a minimum of 15 years. Well, let me ask you a couple of questions. How, first, how many members in local 1733, give or take? Okay, now are you saying how many? How, how many people, how many sanitation workers are there now who over time would be eligible for this? Uh, the exact numbers, right now we have 426. 426. 426. Okay. And what are sort of average wages? I don't know how that works, but just so we have some perspective for people who um, are the, listening. The average wage is right between 31,000 a year and 35,000. 31, okay. if, you, if you're at the highest level, you're at a crew chief right at about 35. Okay. And there was another thing, I don't know if this is a new proposal, forgive me, but they're, they're in, in this whole discussion. Uh, private companies handling, what is it, 40,000 homes out in Hickory Hill, Cordova, Countrywood, Southwind, and Windyke. Are those areas served by private companies now? Okay. Or would that be uh, new? We have 38,000 uh, customers um, that is receiving garbage and recycling services uh, through Republic, uh, which is a private hauler operating in right. Memphis and Chevy County and several of the other uh, local municipalities as well. Um, <clears throat> Where we're getting the 40,000 is uh, we have an annexation south wind coming online in January, and we're just estimating, and I don't think the numbers are going to be somewhere okay. in the ballpark of 2,000, sure. but it may be 1,000. Yeah. Okay. So we're saying 40,000, but it could be as low as 39,000 at the end of the day. And do you, would you like to see more privatization of oh, these services? I mean, obviously, uh, we have not, you know, gotten uh, or received any flack. Uh, from local 1733 when we speak of uh, allowing the private haulers to take on um, south wind once it comes online. So in terms of seeding or outsourcing more services, uh, I'm satisfied with the plan that we have before and, us. We've worked together. This is something okay. that we've agreed on. There has not been any pushback um, okay. with the plan to outsource south wind as it was when we uh, got prepared to provide services in south cordova okay and just a few minutes left, would you like to see more privatization uh over all things being equal i'd rather city crews do the work all things being equal my goal okay. is to deliver the best service as efficiently as possible in a way that's fair to the people that are paying okay. for it and for the retirees if i could say one thing i mean about 25 sure. percent of the city's already outsourced so it's right. not like this is a new concept i think it's smart to have private companies some city employees You've got competition, yeah. you've got benchmarking. Can, and if I could say one more thing, yeah, when yeah, Councilman sure. Lowry and I met with uh, the administration last time, this is before uh, uh, Ms. Tyree was involved, so um, again, we've come a long way in a couple months, but uh, one of the things they proposed was to end trash collection. End, end trash collection. And so one of the things that's now come out of this plan, which again is better, is going to a pay-as-you-throw concept over time, uh, which is good, because it would be horrible to end trash collection, not garbage collection in the cans, but putting the brush out. We I need to continue okay. doing that. I agree people need to pay more for the service, but right. that was what was proposed a couple of months ago. Okay. If I may, as a clarification, sure. the proposal was to go with less frequent trash collection, which is consistent with other cities. How many times cities. a year? Uh, four, four, three or four. And, and let me say, I lived in Henderson. Three, three or four times a week. Three or four year. times a year. When, oh, I lived, okay. when I lived in Hendersonville, if I may. Sure. Uh, your scheduled free collections were three or four times a year. You could still put things out, but you paid for it. And yeah. so the option was to reduce the number of scheduled free pickups and add to that perhaps the pay as you throw. Uh, and again, uh, I, was is, I said ended, I didn't mean that, <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah. drastically decreased Drastic, what we no, have. No, and, and I, you know, I have lived other places. Any, I mean, people I talk to who've lived in other places or my friends who live up in the Northwest, I mean, they just can't believe, again, how cheap and, and the service. Now, some people, everyone can you know, point to a given day where their trash was late or something went wrong. But it, I think y y it is a remarkable amount of oh, frequency absolutely. and what they will, what you all will pick up and so on and so forth. We just have a, a minute left. Bill, last question. All right. Uh, Councilman Conrad, 2505 is the uh, is the fee here. Is that a doable amount for you? And do you think there are seven votes? Possibly. Uh, I think there can be if we can get some good collaboration and communication, you know, with the council. Uh, you know, we didn't get the uh, proclamation that was signed until Tuesday, but I pulled it off the WREG website, you know, on Monday night. So I think if we could get more collaboration and communication with the council as opposed to the media on things, uh, we'd probably get more, a lot more done. I'm interested in a sustainable service, again, that does right by the city taxpayers and, and by the employees. And again, I think we're, we've come a long, long way, and I think a, a great, a great uh, you know, arrangement is, is very, very close, which will ensure that goal. 
And I was wrong. We got. We have another minute here. Uh, my timing was a little bit off. We, let's go back to privatization for a second. I assume your folks would not like to see a whole lot more privatization of services. You're absolutely right. <laughs> see, and, I'm, and, I'm and, the right and, guy, and, aren't and, I? And it, that's right. And in closing, <laughs> I, I have to say, with all things being equal, we would love for the, the members of 1733 to do that work. Yeah, yeah, okay. And on the, I'm sorry, I'm harping on this, but just because you mentioned something, it caught my uh, my my ear. Do you run, you know, when you look at the private services and their cost per stop versus the city of Memphis cost per stop? Right. And are they comparable? Or is there a big swing or big difference? Yeah, we went through a, an exercise um, about a year ago I mean, because there's always been this question in sure. terms of how much does it cost for city crews to provide the same level of services uh, when you compare it to the private. Uh, we did the study. Uh, it is a little bit cheaper. It yeah. wasn't as cheap as we thought it was, but it's okay. a little bit cheaper uh, okay. for us to outsource the services than it is for us to provide the same level of services with in-house crews. Okay. But, and is that, well, but is that outsourcing with the exact same services? It's is outsourcing it? with the exact same well, services, well, garbage, trash, and recycling right. once a week. Well, well, wait, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've, 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 I've sent off a bomb here. We've got 20 <laughs> seconds left, so we will come back and talk some more about this. Gail Tyree, Dwan Gillum. Kemp Conrad, George Lowe, Dries, thank you, <laughs> thank, thank you, you. and thank Absolutely. you for joining us. Join us again next week. Good night.